Hello and welcome to another quick lesson on the difference between electronic codebook, cipher block chaining, cipher feedback mode, output feedback, and counter mode. So these are block cipher modes and that basically just means that these are encrypted in blocks and they could be any different number of sizes. The first one that we're going to go over is electronic codebook. Now electronic codebook is intended for short messages and you'll see why here in just a second. The way it works is we take our first block of data. Let's assume I think it's 64 bit. That's what it says in the book anyway. And we're going to basically run it through our algorithm with a key. And the reason it's called electronic code book is because it's very simple. They like to compare it to a book, an actual book where you would look things up like uh, say row 13 word 6 and your key would be starting on page 10. and your key could be anything. Let's say it'd be start on page 11 or 12 or 13, and then you'd go to this row and that and that word, and that would give you your ciphertext. The problem with this is that there's no initialization vector, which means there's not enough randomness, which is what makes it good for short messages only. And the problem with this is if you have the same text and the same key, you're going to come up with the same ciphertext. With cipher block chaining, we have a couple different elements added into this formula. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's say this is our plain text here. This is our message. And this is our next block of data. So we're going to take it and we're going to get our initialization vector. It's a random value. And I like to think of this as just like another key. If you're new to this concept, it really is just another random value. And so we're going to run that through our encryption algorithm. We're going to run that through our cipher with a random key to get our cipher text. And so what happens here, and there's a little bit of conflicting information out there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with what the official ISC squared book says on this, which is where the ciphertext, it's going to be XOR against the bits of, of our next block of data. So, you know, this is, this is really just going to be bits, ones and zeros. And so it's going to compare the two. And if you're not familiar with it, what an XOR function is, it's basically where you compare the two values. And if they're the same, it yields a zero as a new value. And if they're different, it yields a one as a new value. So it's just, just a way of scrambling it. And with cipher block chaining, if you have the same text and the same key, you're going to get different cipher text for each block. For the stream mode, they call it stream mode. It's not actually a stream cipher, but it simulates a stream. So if you remember what a stream cipher is, it encrypts bit by bit. And uh, that's my pathetic representation of a stream cipher. So with cipher feedback mode, you're going to start with your random initial initialization vector, and you're going to encrypt the initialization vector. So you're going to come up with this random value, and then you're going to encrypt it with your key, and then it's going to come up with the cipher text. So your cipher text is going to be XOR against the block of data from your message. And again, so that's going to compare the two. And I think I did, I actually did the XOR on these. And I believe with cipher feedback, it's, it's the first eight bits and it's going to come up with this new cipher text here. <clears throat> so then what happens here is you have the shift register and what this does, I don't know exactly how this works, but basically this is going to scramble up the numbers. So it's going to shift them around to give you a new initialization vector. I think it divides this. So it takes some of these and then it shifts them around and adds them to the new initialization vector. And so that's going to be encrypted using your key to generate a new value. And that new value is going to be XORed against your second block of data that you want to encrypt. And so the XOR function again is going to yield new ciphertext for that block and so on and so forth. With output feedback mode, you're going to come up with an initialization vector, not you, but the algorithm, and it's going to encrypt it using a key to come up with some ciphertext. And then this ciphertext is instantly going to be your new initialization vector for the next one. So just hold on to that idea for now. You haven't encrypted any of your original message yet. So you're going to XOR that encrypted initialization vector against the first block of data. And that's going to give you your ciphertext here. So your second block of data, basically you're taking this encrypted initialization vector and that's instantly your new initialization vector for the next block of data. That initialization vector is going to be encrypted again through the same method, and then it's going to give you this ciphertext. Now it's the same here, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. This is just for illustration purposes. 
So your ciphertext is going to be XORed against your next block of data to yield your new output, your new ciphertext. With counter mode, you have the counter here, which is basically just, it's the same concept as an initialization vector. It's just a random value. So you're going to encrypt that counter to come up with some ciphertext. And then you're going to XOR that ciphertext against the block of data that you want to encrypt to come up with new ciphertext. And then what's going to happen is this counter is just going to go up by a value. It's either going to be one or it's going to be just a number here. So we don't necessarily know what that is. It's just going to be based on whatever the whatever the algorithm tells it to do, right? So you're going to encrypt this new counter and you're going to come up with new ciphertext that will be XORed against the next block of data to come up with your ciphertext. So here's a little table that kind of shows the differences between all these modes, electronic codebook, cipher block chaining, cipher feedback, output feedback, and counter mode. And so as you can see here, it kind of summarizes it, puts it in a nice little table. And unfortunately, there's no great way to memorize this. And so you might want to pause the video now and copy this table down into your memorization sheet if you need it, if you feel you need it. I don't know if the exam is going to get this detailed in terms of what you need to know. But what I do know and what I've learned recently is that anything in the book, anything in the common body of knowledge is testable. And so... So if you feel the need to, to write this down, then I definitely encourage you to do so. This, this pretty much summarizes, I think, what the principles are that you need to learn. But uh, I hope this video has helped you to understand the difference between, those, between the modes and increased your understanding of the encryption process overall. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks again and have a great day.